In this lesson, we will be learning about how the infrared LED and phototransistor can be combined to form an infrared encoder sensor. The infrared LED is on the left, and the phototransistor is the one on the right. In lesson 4, we already introduced the infrared LED, so this time we'll only take a short look at what it is. The datasheet as we saw last time shows that this infrared LED operates at 880 nanometer with a 16 degree emission angle and one other important thing to note is that the manufacturer was nice enough to tell us what phototransistor matches perfectly with this infrared LED. And here we have the phototransistor. They are very obvious because of the black daylight filter cap. This phototransistor is of the NPN type. The emitter is the shorter pin and the collector the longer pin. The schematic symbol for a phototransistor looks like this where infrared light is hitting the base of the transistor, turning it on. To create an infrared encoder sensor, we take the infrared LED and combine it with the phototransistor. Then, we will cycle two colors in front of the sensor. If the color white is in front of the sensor, the infrared light will reflect almost perfectly and the phototransistor will turn on. However, if the color black is in front of the sensor, much of the infrared light will be absorbed and the phototransistor will not be able to turn on. By using this type of reflectivity sensor, we can make black and white colored encoders for feedback into systems so that they can easily track movement. For this lesson, we want to build an infrared encoder that keeps count of how many times the sensor has transitioned between black and white. To do that, We'll display the count on some red LEDs and via the serial monitor. For the hardware schematic, we'll use the Arduino Nano with its plus 5 volt and ground connected to the breadboard's bus lines. Then analog pin 7 will connect to the phototransistor's collector pin, which will be connected to two 10 kilo ohm resistors in serial going to plus 5 volts. And the phototransistor's emitter pin will connect directly to ground. The infrared LED will connect to plus 5 volts through a 470 ohm resistor and to ground. This means the infrared LED is always on. Four LEDs are connected to digital pins 2, 3, 4, and 5, all with 470 ohm current limiting resistors. And that's the complete hardware schematic. The software side of this experiment is where the real action is. First we define the four LED output pins as digital outputs 2, 3, 4, and 5. The sensor pin is analog pin 7, and since the phototransistor will still slightly turn on when infrared light is reflected off of black surfaces, we will use a threshold voltage of 3.4 volts to define the difference between detecting black and white. Then we will use an integer to keep track of how many transitions have occurred, along with a second integer to keep track of the current detected color. In the setup function, we start with the serial module at 9600 bits per second, and set all of the LED pins to outputs. In the loop function, we first perform the analog to digital conversion of the phototransistor's collector voltage. Next, we send the current status of the system, the distance moved so far, and the current color back to our laptop. Then we use an if-else statement to test whether a transition occurred. If there was a transition from one color to the other, then we update the system information. The final step is to use the distance variable to update the output LEDs. Whenever the variable distance changes by one, the LEDs shift by one place. With the program ready, plug in your Arduino Nano, compile the program, and upload it. To build the experimental circuit, we'll need an introduction to sensors components kit, a jumper wire kit, and a breadboard. The parts from the components kit that we'll be using are the Arduino Nano, four 5mm red LEDs, five 470 ohm resistors, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, the phototransistor, and the infrared LED with its standoff shield. To build the circuit, place the Arduino Nano into the breadboard. Then connect the Arduino Nano's plus 5 volt power and ground connections to the breadboard bus lines. Next, using two orange wires, connect both bus lines of the breadboard together. After that, 
we connect analog pin 7 to the collector pin of the phototransistor, the emitter pin connects directly to ground, and two 10 kilo ohm resistors connect the collector pin in serial to plus 5 volts. On the other side of the board, the infrared LED connects to ground and using a 470 ohm resistor to plus 5 volt power. The final step in this construction is to connect the four 470 ohm resistors and four red LEDs to digital pins 2, 3, 4, and 5. And now with the circuit complete, let's plug in the USB to power up the board. We'll also be using the serial monitor in this experiment to see data output. And with my homemade encoder wheel, you can see as I slowly turn the wheel, at each transition point, the LEDs change by one tick, and the serial monitor registers the distance movement. No matter what direction or speed that I move the wheel, all transitions are detected. A common application for this type of encoder is on motors to keep track of how far they have moved and how fast they are going. Here I put the encoder wheel on a motor that is spinning quite fast, and now when I bring the motor into range of the sensor, you can see the LEDs move continuously and the distance output on the serial monitor increases dramatically. This type of feedback sensor can be used to create very accurate movement in systems that run motors, from turrets on tanks to wheels on robots. In the real world, encoded feedback using infrared sensors are very common. Printers use them to move inkjet stages to exact locations with sub-millimeter precision. The precision you can achieve depends only on the quality of your encoder. This is an example of an inkjet printer I repurposed with a lower quality encoder to show as an example for linear encoding. Another type of encoder uses transparent segments for a sensor to look through instead of reflect off of. But the feedback methodology is the same as it also creates an on-off pulse that a microcontroller can use to track distance and speed. One last thing to mention is that not all types of encoder wheels are created equally. An online image search for encoder wheel yields an array of different relative and absolute encoder wheels. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. In the next lesson, we will be taking a look at how to sense sound by creating a basic sound sensor system.